Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Tea with Mona Me. Today it is just me, Imani here, and I am going to talk to you guys about wedding dress trends for 2022 that I believe will stand the test of time. So a lot of what I hear people say when they come in is that they want to love their dress in 20 years. They want to love their dress in 40 years. And me personally, I feel like if you're going to buy a dress, if you get that feeling, you are definitely going to love it in 20, 40 years. But I can understand how some of the trends that come and go are that. They're trends. They come and go. So, you know, a lot of us with with our parents or whatnot that got married in the 80s and we see the big sleeves on the gown, the puffy sleeves, and we see the style of their dresses, all of the taffeta and stuff like that. And we're like, whoa, like that's very 80s. But, you know, there's something kind of beautiful about that to me. I just feel like no matter what you go with, you are going to love your dress in 20, 40 years. We look at it because it was a different time, but they look at it like this was the moment, this was what I fell in love with, and this was the dress I got married in. So first I want to talk about the 2022 trends before I kind of break down what I think will, you know, stand the test of time. So I browsed some different articles, but I really like this one from The Knot because they talked about all of the trends for 2022 and kind of got into examples and stuff like that. I'm just going to tell you the trends and then I'm going to get into my own information. But um, yeah, so 2022, we're looking at square necklines, off the shoulder sleeves, which I feel like should be off the shoulder slash statement sleeves because a lot of these sleeves are like really big puffy sleeves or they have some kind of something to them so i'm gonna say off the shoulder slash statement sleeves transitional pieces i.e capes toppers coats slip dresses high slits floral feathers ruffle ruffles slash texture short dresses and pants so to me that's a lot in there that i think has been carried over from 2021 trends um like the slip dresses is a really big one the slits is a big one that I feel like has kind of been pretty consistent but let's break down what I feel like is going to kind of be pretty consistent through the upcoming years so the first one I want to talk about is square necklines and square necklines are really structured they complement larger busts but they also complement smaller busts and they also complement those kind of in the middle of the two so i really like them for that reason i feel like square necklines just look really good on most everybody and what's nice about them too is the way that they frame the bust a lot of times they can steal like those little pe- little parts you know, like that little bit of extra that sometimes people like to cover up all around their armpit area. So um, I really like that about square necklines. Not to mention they're not too modest, but they're also not too revealing. They're very versatile, so they can be on really any dress. The reason why I think that they're going to stand the test of time is because they're just a really minor touch to keep the dress up to date but they're not too big of a touch where they would date the dress. So it's definitely giving 2021, 2022, 2020 vibes, but at the same time, it's also not nailing it to that point in time. So I believe like in 20 years, if somebody was looking at a dress with a square neckline, they're not gonna know exactly where it's from. But in the moment, it's very now, which is why I really like this trend. My favorite square line dresses, square neckline dresses right now come from Justin Alexander's signature, um, Issa Makino and Susan Neville. So I really like what they've done with them. There's a good range in there. There's simplicity. There's a lot of detail. So within those designers, I would definitely say check out what they have because I think that they've done square necklines really beautifully. So the next trend I'm going to talk about is off the shoulder slash statement sleeves. So to me, off the shoulder sleeves have been something people have asked for for a long time. Definitely since I started in bridal, 
around five years ago. That's something that I've heard people ask for pretty consistently. So I wouldn't say that that's a trend just of 2022. I think that that's kind of just been a, a thing for a while. But what I'm noticing more and more is the statement side of that. So the puffiness of the sleeve, the kind of like billowing sleeve, um, the detail on the sleeve has become a little more important versus people were often just kind of looking for a little like off the shoulder swag or like something that was just there. So a lot of times people look for those to conceal. So that's one of the reasons why I really like the sleeve is because they do conceal. But a lot of times with these off the shoulder sleeves, they're making them detached. We talked about it before on the podcast where you have options to move because with the off the shoulder sleeve, sometimes you can't raise your arm. But now that they're coming detached, you can raise your arm. So I really like that about them. Um, They also give you like a really ethereal kind of dreamy look, like these bigger billowing sleeves, these statement sleeves that I think is so perfect for anything outdoors. Garden, beach, winery. I mean, you name it. If any part of your wedding is going to be outdoors and you're considering an off-the-shoulder sleeve or a statement sleeve, I think it is absolutely perfect and definitely fitting for outside because of that like ethereal dreamy element to the sleeve. I also love that there's, I said already that there's room to move, but they also capture really beautifully in photos, especially with like a floral bouquet. And they are not, they don't date the gown. I mean, they definitely kind of assign it to a period, like a time period, but I don't think that they fully date the gown. Like I think if, We're looking back, and this is all me kind of just like speculating on what I feel like is going to happen. But if we look back on it in, you know, 10, 20, 30 years, I don't think that you would know for sure that that was very of the moment for this time. I think that one's a little harder to say than the other ones, just because I keep thinking about like the 80s sleeves and how we know that those are 80s, 90s gowns because of the sleeves. But... There was also a lot of other elements to them, too, that let us know that they were 80s, 90s gowns. So I don't I don't know. I'm not 100 percent sure on this one of whether or not it would be something we look back on and think it's like, oh, that's very 2021. That's very 2022. But ultimately, we're going to see. I don't feel that way, though. So my favorite gowns with Statement sleeves slash off-the-shoulder sleeves right now come from Eddie Kay, Justin Alexander, and Pronovius. Or I believe the Justin Alexander one that I'm referring to is actually a Lillian West. So Lillian West will change. Eddie Kay, Lillian West, and Pronovius are my favorite gown designers right now that do those statement sleeves. So the next trend I'm going to talk about is going to be slip dresses. So slip dresses have been popular again for a while. Um, I definitely would say that I have had people ask for them for a while. But the reason why I really like them is I think they're very elegant, they're clean, and they're very classic because I think they do kind of have like a call to like a little bit of a call to like vintage style. I always think of Marilyn Monroe when I think of slip dresses because she, for one of her weddings, she did wear kind of a slip style gown and it just looked very effortless and very pretty. And that's the kind of vibe I feel like slip dresses give. That's why I really like them. And I love that they are getting more popular. As far as dating, as far as knowing where they're from, I also really like them because they have that little bit of a vintage element to them. I think you can't really spot when they are. You can't really assign a date to them. Because, I mean, Marilyn Monroe, I believe that was like the 40s when she got married in hers. So it's kind of like it it really could be a toss-up. It has that call to vintage, but at the same time, it's still super modern and of the moment right now. They also have like a element of sexiness to them. And then for anybody who's maybe a little bit shorter that wants to look a little taller, I do feel like they elongate you a little bit just because of the slimness of the fit. So that's something to consider too. My favorite designers for these gowns right now are going to be Suzanne Neville, Vanderveld, and Pronovius. I've seen a gown from each of those designers that I really feel like was just a really solid slip gown. So 
big fan of those. <clears throat> So in these, I those were really the three that kind of stood out to me. But I do want to talk about a couple of like honorable mentions, I would say. Um, the transitional pieces, we do have a lot of capes and things like that that have come through the store that I love. I do feel like the capes kind of are of the moment right now and have kind of been of the moment for, you know, the last year or so. But I think that they are so gorgeous. Uh, Berta does a beautiful sparkle cape. Uh, I saw one from Vanderveld as well. Pernovius is really big with capes. So if you're interested in capes, I would say check those designers out because their capes are stunning. And they do give like this very regal element to your look. I really like capes. I would say if you want something really unique and really trendy and modern, definitely look at a cape. The only thing I will say with capes, and for your wedding, you have to like live your truth, honestly. Just do what you want to do. But I'm saying this in my personal taste, I do feel like sometimes it's hard to pull off a cape and a veil. I really like when I see capes with like really beautiful headpieces more so because it's like two flowing things. And I think sometimes the look gets lost, but that's my opinion about it. I think a cape with a gorgeous headpiece is just... A stunning look so if you're going to do a cape and you're kind of wondering how to style the cape that would be my advice another one I want to talk about is floral and I want to talk about floral because we have a Marxanino in the store and it is completely floral and it is one of the most stunning dresses in my opinion that we have in the store it is so beautiful and it was done just really well I love floral gowns I think it's hard because the floral thing will be something that people that love floral and really want to do something different and fun for their wedding will be all about but it's still you know people kind of I feel like aren't super sold on it just because we have this idea that we're supposed to be in white wedding gowns so ultimately your wedding gown is going to be whatever you want it to be and I think that if you want it to be different and you want to stray from the norm, if you're looking at colors, if you're looking at prints, floral is so beautiful and you should definitely check out Mark Zanino. He has a couple of floral gowns and they're just, I mean, they're all stunning. And I think that they could work for a lot of different venues and just, they're, they're just gorgeous, honestly. And what I really like about his gowns in particular is like the construction of them is so great that I really think that they kind of fit a lot of different body types. So definitely check out Mark Zanino if you're looking for a floral dress. The short dresses and the pants I also wanted to talk about too because we do have a lot of short dresses in the store now or we just got some new short dresses in the store now and some jumpsuits and this really crazy cool Pernobius suit we have in the store now as well. And when I was reading that article from The Knot, they were talking about these things being more so like rehearsal, brunch, like after party kind of looks. So I really like the idea of changing into something like that. One of my favorite scenes all time from a movie would be in Fifty Shades of Freed. <laughs> <laughs> when she changes from her Monique Boulier gown into a pink bridal suit. I think that was so iconic. It has to be one of my favorite wedding looks in a movie. And I think it just was so, so beautiful. Like the suit was done so well. So when we got the Pronovia suit that we got into store and it had like a little touch of lace, it's from the Ashley Graham Pronovius collection. I was obsessed with it immediately. It is such a cool look. And what's nice about changing into something shorter or pants is you're going to get a lot more movement. So you're going to be able to do more. And I don't know if you want to do more on the dance floor. You want to just be able to walk around and talk to everybody and not have to carry your dress um, on you around because, you know, wedding dresses are a little heavy. But either way, 
I think it's an option if you're looking for a second look and it's something that people might not necessarily expect. Again, I don't think these things are dated, short dresses and pants, but I do think that they're a different look and you have to be the person that wants that look to have that. If you want to keep with your own vision and your vision doesn't include that, that's kind of why I didn't mention it in the three trends I talked about. But I definitely don't think that that one is dated either. So ultimately, I just want to wrap up this thought with saying that when it comes to your wedding dress, as I said in the beginning, if you love it now, chances are you're going to love it in 10, 20, 30, 40 years. You're going to love it for the rest of your life. But if you are worried about date a dated look, if you're worried about getting on board with a trend, because I mean, that's what trends are. Trends come and go and they change. Then these, that's why I kind of wanted to talk about these things in particular today. I will say that trends do repeat, which is nice about them. You know, we were talking about five years ago, six years ago, we were talking about how crazy 80s sleeves were still and look at us now. We have these big statement sleeves that are coming back and I can't help but think about how hard all of us may have roasted our parents or friends or whatnot for for getting married in these dresses, but we are now all obsessed with, well, not all of us, but a lot of us um, here in the bridal industry, I can speak for, are obsessed with these large sleeves and these statement pieces that um, were popular back then as well. So you never know, follow your heart on it and go with whatever is speaking to you. So I hope I could help you guys out today by talking about these trends. Definitely check out the designers I was talking about. And of course, if you love this podcast and you enjoyed this episode, please like us or subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and rate us if you love us extra. You can follow us at Monami Bridal Salon on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Snapchat, um, YouTube. I think that's all the socials, but we are on the wedding websites, The Knot and Wedding Wire and Yelp. Of course, if I missed anything, it is going to be at Mona Me Bridal Salon on literally anything you can think of. But yeah, until next episode, you guys, I will talk to you later. Bye.